Hello, this is I Do Damage, and welcome back to the channel. In this Magic Legends video, I want to talk to you about Endgame. Since I've been playing, I've been trying to figure out exactly what is Endgame in Magic Legends. Remember, the game is in beta, and I fully expect there to be more updates as time progresses. But let's talk about what there is right now in the Endgame, once you've completed all the story acts in all five of the regions. The developers have commented on this specific topic, and I will have the link for that down in the description below. This was in the state of the game update, which I did have a video covering as well. That'll be down in the comment section. Make sure you check that out after you've seen this video. So if you read the state of the game portion that talks about end game, they consider a large part of the end game to be updating your personal realm. Your personal realm is unlocked once you've completed the tutorial part of Magic Legends, which is rather lengthy. But in this video, let's go ahead and just talk about exactly what that means. In my own opinion, I think the personal realm is more of a long-term endgame goal instead of actual endgame content. Endgame content to me is bosses, raids, new dungeons, new difficulties to conquer. And some of that is here within Magic Legends, but let's go ahead and break it down. I will have all the timestamps down in the description below for your convenience if there's a specific topic that you're looking for. Once you've actually unlocked your personal realm, your Planeswalker realm, there are different buildings within this area that you can level up to a max level of 10. There are four different stations that I have so far. I think there's one more that I have yet to unlock. All those can be leveled up to 10. And then within your actual core, we'll start there for this premise of talking about this, your Aetheric core. This is one of the buildings that you can level up to 10. Within here, you can level up each of your planes to level 10 as well. There's five different planes to level up. You have actual planes, islands, swamp, mountain, and forest. And what leveling these up does, the actual planes, decreases the cost to rank up your spells. If you don't level up these different lands, it is pretty expensive to actually go in and level up your spells. So I do recommend leveling these up so that you don't have to pay as many spell pages to increase the rank. You can see right here, just so you have an example of what I'm talking about. If you go into a rank four, you can see this spell right here costs 800 spell pages. And that is because my water land or whatever it's called islands i think they call it is only rank three so when i increase that then up to level four we'll see that price drop down i think to get from rank two to three cost me like 60 or 80 cards it is a pretty big jump so definitely definitely do this you can see the cost of leveling up each of these lands costs gold as well as that specific type of mana which is okay except for there is a cap on mana that you can get weekly we'll maybe talk about that later but i don't want that to be the focus of this video in this video i do want to stay focused on what end game actually is so you have your five lands each of these can be leveled up to 10 that's 50 different levels to gain here you also have your structure itself that can be leveled up to 10 and increasing this is actually pretty important as well because it increases the stack size that you can put up on the broker. If you don't know what the broker is, pretty much think of it as an auction house, except for as soon as you put something up for sale, you get the money right away, instead of having to wait for someone to go in and accept that transaction. Another thing that makes the broker a little bit unique is you have a daily limit. Yes, there's lots of limits on this game, but you have another daily limit of 10 trade tokens a day. One trade token is used to either buy or sell. So you need to be a little bit strategic in how you're using these tokens. You can hold up to 30 tokens. So if you do the math, that's a total of three days worth of tokens you can have at one time. So if you can put up more spell pages per token, you're getting a better bang for your buck. So this is definitely worth leveling up. But you can see here, you also have to level up your other buildings in here as well. So you can't just level your core up to 10. You have to keep everything else kind of balanced while you're leveling up and kind of progressing throughout your personal realm. Anyway, that's one building, the Aetheric Core and the lands that are tied to it. The next one that I want to point out here is your Arcane Workshop. This is an important part of the game, and I talked about this in the Beginner's Guide video. That'll be down in the comments as well. Make sure you check that out after this video if you haven't yet. Within your Arcane Workshop, you can level this building up to level 10 as well. <laughs> Leveling up your workshop is going to get you an increased drop rate for Relic Fragments, which isn't huge since you can only hold a thousand of those at any given time. 
But where this does become a really sweet structure is you can also craft new equipment and craft relic fragments. I have not unlocked this yet. I also read on their developer vlog, and I haven't leveled it up. It's only level, what, four right now? I think you can actually create relics later on. I haven't gone that far due to the weekly cap of mana. But you can craft new equipment, which means you can then find that equipment to drop out in the world with new modifiers. And basically, plussing up your workshop is huge because that's how you actually allow other items to drop while you're playing the game. This has been my number one priority outside of unlocking new classes, which we'll get to next. So you can level up the Arcane Workshop to level 10. You can also research fragments here. And what this is, is it's uh, two days and 18 hours is when you actually very first start it. And it's free to start, but after two days and 18 hours, you get these rewards. So it's basically just kind of like a passive income, I guess, that you just, it's time gated basically. But it's free and it's something that you can just gain while you're playing the game pretty much. Just make sure you don't already have a thousand of these common relic fragments, otherwise these 50 would be wasted. You can also do, and this is where I would argue the game is a little bit pay to win. Again, not what this video is about, but this is that was a little bit of my opinion there. You can come in here and you can pay Aether to unlock relic fragments right out of the gate. This one right here, this Aether Rush isn't huge since it's just relic fragments and they're really easy to get. I would say this is a waste of Aether. But it's definitely an option and it's there. The biggest part of the workshop though is unlocking new item drops and new things that you can find while playing the game. So definitely level up the workshop. That's building number two in the personal realm that they have. And remember, this is what they're calling end game guys, is leveling all of this up. So now we have the mana vault. The mana vault can also be leveled up to 10. Within here, you can generate planner mana of all colors. You can also refine orbs of shadow that are obtained from world bosses. I want to kind of break this one down a little bit for you because this one is a little bit more interesting than the one we just talked about in the fact that this one really can become pay to win really quick. If you look at the Aether Rush here, you can pay this much Aether to get all of this mana. You can buy refined Aether with Zen through the game's exchange. Keep in mind though, mana obtained this way still counts towards your weekly cap. So don't come in here thinking that you're going to go past your weekly cap on this. It'll just convert this over to gold with a two to one ratio. So it's two gold per one mana. So you can do the math there. Definitely not worth it if you're already weekly capped. But if you're out of time, you can't get to your weekly cap, you would come in here and knock these out. It's okay. But really the weekly cap's not hard to get. You can level this thing, like I said, up to level 10. I think that as I level this up, I'll unlock a new way that I can harvest more mana. Pure speculation again. I haven't made it that far yet. It's only level four. But this works the same way as the relic fragments over on the other structure of the workshop that I showed you. It's a two day, 18 hour process. Free to start, but you get mana at the end of those two days and 18 hours. And I want to let you know that if you are weekly capped, you come in here and claim these, they do not count towards your weekly cap. I tried it, I should have read this first, but yeah, if this is complete, you're already weekly capped, I would recommend just waiting for the weekly reset, which I believe is every Tuesday at 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. But that's what the Mana Vault is, your Harvest Mana and your Aether Rush. This is what I wanna talk about though, and this is a this is a big part of the end game that you should know about basically is when you're out fighting world bosses these are not the mythic encounters these are world bosses okay so when you're in an overworld there's five overworlds right when you're in an overworld and you're out doing skirmishes you're killing those mythic encounters you're taking down mana towers rather defending those mana towers doing those different events you're going to be getting this charge in the overworld that's that yellow bar and when that's full a world boss will spawn into that map It'll say echo of in whatever region you're on or whatever boss it is. And you'll go into that. It's an unmarked little blip that you can find in the overworld. You go into that portal, you fight the world boss. And when you kill it, you get an orb of shadows. You can only get five a week. But this is what you do is you bring that orb of shadows that you got from the world boss. And you turn it in here. It completes instantly and you get all this. Okay. That's all it is. That's all it is. Once you've killed and gotten your five coins for the week, world bosses past that point, at least at this point in the game, are super unrewarding. 
And I think that's a huge, huge design flaw because that's supposed to be the pinnacle of the overworld progression is getting that world boss to spawn, taking down that world boss. It's just not rewarding as is. I could go on and on about it, but I don't want to. I want to focus on what they're calling end game. That's building number three of your personal realm. Next up, we have my personal favorite. This is the Mystical Study. The Mystical Study can be leveled up to level five and is the primary place you're going to come if you want to unlock a new class for your Planeswalker. The first class that you unlock is pretty cheap. Currently, I'm working on my second class to unlock, which will be it'll be my third class overall because I started out as a Necro. I unlocked the Geomancer. Because once you get a character to level 30, you unlock its trait. You can have three traits equipped on your character at one given time. The Geomancer is nice because it gives you, when you die, you can come back to life one time. With like 25% of your health and then you regen some more health. Just a nice way that when you get one shot, you can come back to life and try to get your redemption. Right now I'm trying to unlock the third class. And that's what these costs are right here. Pretty freaking crazy, dude. It's pretty crazy. The first one didn't cost near this much. It was significantly cheaper and way easier to actually obtain. I mean, if you look at this, dude, this is a fifth of your weekly cap on mana. And the price is going to increase. So even after this, I have two more after this to unlock. I, don't tell me, and I'm scared to see what the prices are going to be for them. But anyway, this is how you unlock your new starter classes. Or you can pay $15 on the cash shop to unlock a class outright. Just keep that in mind there. But I mean, look at this, dude. 100,000 Aether. That's two days of Aether caps. Or you can buy Zen and, you know, buy Aether. Anyway, back to the end game. <laughs> I keep getting off topic here. So within the mystical study, you can get this thing up to level 5. You can research new classes, new spells, and create spell pages. We talked about our starter classes. This is another one of those. I just started this one a little bit ago. It's uh, two days, 18 hours, and you get a handful of spell shards. If you read, though, and this is the catch. If you read right here, it says equivalent to two-story missions. I guess these are spells, but if you come down here to planner mana, you can actually get spell pages or spells you currently own equivalent to four story missions. So I messed up. I shouldn't have started this one. I, I should have gone down here. I wish I could cancel this and redo it. Anyway, don't make the mistake I made. Once you've unlocked this research spells planner mana down here, make sure you're doing that one. You're going to get double the amount of spell shards. Now I have to wait two days and 17 hours to do that one. Anyway, and I'm pretty sure I unlocked this one by leveling up the mystical study here. And then... So Mystical Study, I'm sorry I keep getting off track here, but Mystical Study can level up to level 10. You can unlock your starter class. You can research these spell pages here. You can unlock double the amount down here, which is, it takes the same amount of time. I think the thing that's different here is this one's free, but this one costs the 1,000 mana and 10,000 gold. I think that's what the caveat is here. And then you also have your Aether Rush that if you want to spend Aether to buy spell shards... Don't do it. It's a waste of money. But if you wanted to, you could. But what makes the Mystical Study really important and really cool here is 30% of the spells that you can unlock within Magic Legends will come from this building right here. As you level up the Mystical Study, more cards will become available for you to unlock by paying Aether, Gold, and Mana. Some cards are going to cost more. Like As you unlock more and level up your Mystical Study, those cards you unlock, the price will increase on them. But there's some pretty cool cards in here. I'm not going to talk about them all, but but there's multiple for each type of mana. You can come in here and, and check them all out. Just keep in mind, 30% of the cards that you can get in the game only come from this right here. So that alone is a reason to actually progress your personal realm and level up that mystical study. That was building number four in your personal realm. I think there's one more building over here that I haven't unlocked this yet. I don't know what it is. Maybe that's the crafting station. I don't know. I'll have to get back to you when I unlock it and let you know what that is. But if so, that's a whole other building you can level up to five. I'm guessing that's where you craft different things. I don't know. If someone has it unlocked, you can let us know down in the comment. That'd be great. Appreciate you. That's one part. That's that's pretty much, I would say, like half the end game, basically, is this long-term progression. But to me... 
this isn't really end game content. Sure, it's something to be working on in the background while I'm playing the game, but where's the actual end game content? End game content to me is content that I play past the story, right? Within Magic Legends, this is what they are calling the actual end game content that you can play. Let's go ahead and talk about it right now. These are your missions, ordeals, and overworlds. There are five overworlds, which we will go ahead and talk about first. You have Gavany and Tazim. This is the dark magic. This is the green, this is the starter tutorial green realm. And then within here, you have these three overworlds as well. They're each tied to their own mana type. But each overworld, you can actually change the difficulty of. There's four different difficulties that you can play on. Normal, hard, expert, and master. And this is what they're considering endgame to be. One thing you need to keep in mind when you're picking out what difficulty and which overworld you want to play and grind on is each overworld has a regional modifier that comes into effect when you have it set to the highest difficulty of master. It doesn't tell you what that regional modifier is on this menu. You have to come over here to your guide, click on a mission here to see what the enchantment is for that specific overworld. A little bit confusing, but I was talking with one of our buddies, Shadow, the other day. Shout out to you, brother. We were having a nice little conversation and we figured this out. And that's why I'm talking about it in this video, is if you decide that you want to play on the overworld banalia on master difficulty you're going to have this reflect pretty much you're going to die a lot i wouldn't recommend doing banalia on master but this is what's weird so you can see this regional enchantment when you're picking out your mission but you can't see it when you're picking out the overworld why i don't know but i've tested it and that regional modifier is actually in effect as long as you have it on master even if you're in the overworld and not in a mission, it's still in effect. So you can go through each region has its very own regional modifier. We have Reflect that I talk about. Over here in Gavany, this is my, I think probably the easiest one to get around. Hazards do 100% more damage. Shiv is burning, all the enemies have a burning AoE. Over into Zeem, you have enemies take 50% less damage from creatures that you summon. And Talaria is your spells do 20% more damage, but you take 10% of your health each time that you cast sorcery. So keep that in mind. If you're playing on Master in the Overworld, those are on by default. You cannot turn them off. But the end game here is so you have those five overworlds that we just went through with their regional modifiers. You also have within each region, each region has three story missions. Missions is a key word that I want you to remember. Missions have a book icon on them. These are the three missions in Talaria. If they have a torch icon, that means it is an ordeal. You're going to notice that some of your weekly quests, daily quests are going to say, do this amount of missions. Make sure you're actually doing the ones that have a book or they will not count towards that progression of that quest. So with that in mind, you have a total of 15 missions that you can do. There's four different difficulties for each of those missions. You also have 10 ordeals. So that's 25 dungeons or instances that you can do 15 story missions that can be replayed and 10 ordeals i have a ordeal guide and i will have that link down in the comments below make sure you check it out after this video i did every single ordeal in the game they are time limited quest instances i guess we have to get as many points as possible and there's different objectives if you want to know every what every single ordeal is in the game and how they work check out that video. I played them all, took notes on them all, and then made a video about it all into one nice little bundle for you to hopefully save you time when you're trying to figure out what ordeal you actually want to do. So you have the 15 story missions, 10 ordeals, five overworlds. That's a total of 30 different maps to play in the end game with four different difficulty settings. And then if you're playing on your expert, you can decide if you want four instances when you're doing these story or ordeals, you can decide if you want to have your regional enchant on or not, but you have to queue solo if you want it on. If you're matchmaking, it's off by default. Same thing applies to world enchantments. 
which these these are a great way to increase your rewards while also increasing the challenge of that mission as well. Normal difficulty and hard difficulty can be played at any character or class level. You cannot play on master or expert until you've hit at least one class level 30. At that point, you can turn it up, and the jump in difficulty is significant. It, there's really no in-between here. It's it's a big jump in difficulty, and I, I think the difficulty curve is a little bit too steep at times just because you get straight up one shot. It's not even like a fun difficulty thing. It's just you get one shot, and there's nothing you can do about it. But if you're playing on expert, you can decide if you want that regional modifier on or off and then put on whatever world enchants. I've been selling all mine because it's a great way to make gold, but you can have three world enchants. Now if you turn it up to master, the regional enchant is on, and you have no choice. Even if you, I think even if you use the dungeon finder system but that's pretty much how difficulties and all the missions work in the end game so now that you know what the end game is within magic legends you know that there's the personal realm and you have the 30 different maps that you can do and the, those 30 maps include the 15 story missions the 10 ordeals and the five overworld maps i want to share my thoughts i think the end game is boring i really do i think the end game is boring but I enjoy playing it. That's the weird thing is I really do enjoy running around the overworld the most. I love just running around, bouncing into other players and doing events. I find it really, really fun and relaxing. The only issue I have is those world enchants that you can make a lot of money off of only drop from missions and or deals. I haven't got a single one to drop in the overworld at least, which isn't a huge issue. But I guess my main concern with the end game currently, and it's in beta, so hopefully they add more things to do. But once you've completed all the story missions and all five of the zones, those missions and ordeals you do during the story, and so you've already seen them all. There's no new content after the stories. I think it'd be really cool if once you completed all five regions' stories, you unlocked a whole new end game zone that maybe had random regional modifiers, maybe a PVP thing turned on, actual rewarding world bosses, different types of events, a whole new loot tier. There's so many things that they could do to actually add an end game. The end game right now pretty much is make your own goals. Do what you want in the end game, have fun. Right now the end game is literally whatever you want to do. And I think for most people, they complete those stories of all the regions and, you know, they've seen all the content. They've done it all. They've done all the mana towers. They've done all the skirmishes. They've hit their weekly and daily caps. Why keep playing? I had that. I was, I was four days into the weekly reset and I hit the weekly cap on mana. And I really didn't feel any incentive to keep playing other than to farm gold for whatever reason i guess to unlock my new class but i don't know i hope they add something that's more engaging and more fun and i don't mean to say that it's just really grindy it is the game is really grindy and i don't mind it because action rpgs typically are grindy and repetitive you do the same maps over and over to find loot i played for eight hours the other day and i found no exciting loot i think i found one new card that wasn't even for my deck. I find a lot of items that drop in the game as well that are just unexciting. The loot is horrible in this game and really boring. I think if you're going to make us grind and grind and do the same maps and missions and skirmishes over and over again, make the loot exciting. I want to have that moment of, oh my gosh, this just dropped on the floor. This is sweet. This is a sweet item. This is gameplay changing. And that does exist, but not very often. And when it does, usually the loadout score on that specific piece of equipment is lower than what you currently have equipped. So I don't know. I don't know what the answer is. I don't have the answer. But if I'm being honest with you, the current end game is relatively boring. I think the game is still definitely worth checking out, and I'm kind of getting off track here. I wanted to just keep this focused on Endgame, but overall, the game itself is interesting. It's unique, it's open world, it has that MMO light that I've been looking for from an action RPG, but it's definitely, and I've realized this, that MMOs and action RPGs are very hard to combine successfully. 
especially on Magic Legends, it's definitely more of an MMO than it is an action RPG. That's a whole other topic for a whole other day and a whole other video. That's going to be it for this Magic Legends video, though. Hopefully, you now understand what the end game is within Magic Legends and if it's something that you want to invest your time into. I hope you enjoyed this video and all the content on the channel. If so, don't forget to like, subscribe, or ring that bell to get notified when I post new weekly videos and also when I do go live. I typically stream here on the YouTube channel on Fridays and Saturdays. Occasionally, I'll do some pop up streams over on Twitch as well throughout the week. I appreciate you all. Don't forget, your view means the absolute world to me. As always, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.